the uh, the uh, what do you call it? Uh, that's about as good as yeah. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Comments, comments. Okay, they're there. Okay, we are live. I'm gonna share that. That's about as good as yeah. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Let's see if I can share this. And we'll get going here. We'll get somebody on here and test it and then make sure uh, we're going. Okay. Let's see. Nope, not on there. We got somebody on. All right. Hey, Todd's on. James the Get's on. Sounds good, Todd? Go ahead and talk, Andy. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> I, if you guys could share this too for us, I, I'm just not real good at figuring all this out, how to share it. And, there we go. Don't, sharing it. Yeah, don't look at me. Yeah, you, you, Hey, we're both. <laughs> I, remember, I remember the days you come in and you're so frustrated with, with your phone and all that. And, oh, my gosh. That, that Big Hill, that was my first, uh, yeah. first experience with a smartphone. I about threw that thing in the water, man. That was brutal. I I could I I think I would have won it. I had three fish and I I they they got lost in my phone. But I don't even think I took a picture of them. <laughs> I would buy you that day. And uh, you were yeah. You, we passed each other. Oh, remember that was like whenever every time you'd pass me, I'd catch a fish. Yeah, yeah. And then that, and then that magic kind of stopped. I don't know what happened, but I was always kind of looking for you when I was hurting for a fish. I'm like, oh, there's Marty. And then bam, I get a fish. Yeah. Yeah. Those were those are good times, man. Yeah, then I I did not get a bite that day. Not a bite. It, it was I, yeah. talk about brutal. I mean, kind of like this Palestine tournament. That was on on our way to the lake. I was with Tom Fisher, and Tom he's not a, he's not a, he's not an ice fisherman or anything. So the cold weather kind of freaks him out. Yeah. And what, it, it was like what twenty seven degrees, and it was sleet and rain. It was brutal, and I don't know what it was. It was a big. I think it was an owl or something. Almost slammed into our windshield, and. I was like, oh, my God, I wonder what that means. And Tom's like, took a <laughs> wow. yeah, That's pretty funny. How do I share that to my – share – okay, I'll copy the link. There we go. Anyway, guys that are getting on here, we've got Andy Moore from Omaha. Now, look at that background. Look at that. <laughs> You're not mine, you guys. Look at his – it's like going into an old-time tackle shop. You know, <laughs> no, I mean, the the hat. And by the way, he has a lot of nice looking sunlight over there. You guys see that? Uh, it's like $600 worth, man. I stocked up with COVID. I was so worried about not being able to get stuff, yeah. man. I panicked because that's the only line I use. Yeah. If I don't have sunlight, I ain't going to fish. <laughs> yeah, that's exact. I use the same stuff, man. Uh, it's, I tell you what, man, it took me a long time to find the right floral. I tried them all. I mean, I tried cigar. I tried yeah. pea line. I tried everything. And I tell you what, like, not strength um like p line i'd have to like retie every five fish you know or break this i this this fc super sniper is the stuff i mean it is good yeah. and i have tried every floor out there and i i have i have 100 percent confident in that line and that's that's the main thing you know if you're confident in your line you're gonna fish better Absolutely. You know, bottom line same way i use uh the the 16 pound and i use everything from seven all the way up to to seven to is it 17 17 pound, I think they have. Yeah, they got 17. Yeah. They have every, they have one, they have one through 17. I mean, yeah, they even I, have, you can get yeah. one. Yep. I, I, I've got, I, I, go, I use, yep. Go ahead. Sorry. You can't break it with your hand 16. No, not at all. I mean, I, I pulled up like a whole brush pile with 12 pound. Yeah. You can't. I, <laughs> so, so funny story. So day, day, day two, oh no, it was day. Yeah. Don't know. Day two of the tournament. I had, I had filled my card and I was just upgrading. So I was just hitting docks and stuff. I had a big old uh, lipless, one of those six cent studs of the, the oversized ones are really big. Yeah. I had the 16, uh, maybe it was a 14 pound fluoro. And I caught, it was, it was so windy. I was in like two, three, I don't know, maybe even four footers or white caps. And I hit one and, you know, I went like that and I was cast and I hit this guy's dock and I couldn't, I'm drifting so fast. I couldn't do anything. So I'm just letting line out and I, I'm holding it so tight. I'm trying to break it. it wouldn't break it. Kind of stopped me, but the wind was so hard and it, it snapped so loud, man. It, I mean, you could probably hear the snap a mile away. I, mean, I thought I broke my rod tip when I did it, but okay. I mean, that stuff is strong. I about pulled his dock down. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. So we got uh, Michael Thomas. Hi, Ty Michael. 
the and James Leggett said, was that 2018 M, uh, M Midwest kite fishing? So I believe that was 2017. And was it 17? The, the one I won? No, the one that. Uh, oh, yeah, that was 18. Yeah. yeah. Big Hill. It was so cold. Yeah. And and uh, it, I mean, it was cold. But I what happened for me that day was a guy had flipped his kayak and I helped get him in. And I remember he, that. And he lost his drive. I remember so, that, yeah. And I thought I was in a great spot. So did you, but nothing, man. Just nothing. It was just all points. Um, I was, I was just catching them on all points, main, main lake points. Yeah. But it was, it was one of those grueling, you know, slow finessing things, man. But yeah, that yeah. I remember seeing James there. He was with Prescott, I believe, and then that's where I met David Cruz and Kevin. Kevin was staying with the mom. There was this little kid there. He was like. Like yeah. ten years old, I'm like, who's that? And Kevin's like, oh, that's Brady. Yeah, Brady <laughs> so I, yeah, yeah, Brady was like what twelve when he started. Yeah, it's yeah. like he that just was, tagged along with all of us. Yeah, and that was maybe the four. first big MKFS. Yeah, that's that's when it that's when it switched to all bass. Yeah, um, and it, that's when kind of Nate took it over, and it was. Yeah. I mean, that was frick. I mean, we what we had a thousand dollar guarantee for every every tournament. Um, they had a good sponsor um no that was that's that was great and, that, and honestly that's why i love the all-american because it's the same feel you know it's the same people it's that, uh i love it that was the turning point from multi-species to strictly bass remember yep. when, you were part of the kayak oh. of days oh yeah no i i resisted it because i i i'm a really good multi-species fisherman i love fishing for crappie in april you know in the spawn yeah. but I, you know, my, my heart's with, you know, I, it is what it is. I, I'm glad it, it made me a better bass fisherman. That's for sure. I mean, I focus on bass now, you know, that eight months out of the year now. So I, I'm glad it happened. It, it was, it was bound to happen that way anyways, you know? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But the, we, the thing was it evolved, you know, cause I mean, Oh, totally. In, in 2004, when I had, when I hosted the first tournament out West, we had nine species and what you had to do, you got a little piece of paper with little circles on it next to the species. You had a pencil. <laughs> and if you caught that species, you you penciled it in. And you nice. got points for that. And it was right. all honor system. Oh, that's and funny. You, and it was the next year we used a camera to identify. Right. Species. Yeah. Was, I mean, we, you know, it wasn't like cheating or anything, but it was like, you know, oh my gosh, to verify your, your, but we had rock bass and rainbow trout on there and see my little guy cj was he was fishing in it you know and and you could have your like you did we had our kids in the you had a canoe oh yeah hannah fished with me in a canoe yeah yeah. Yeah. so though we go way back into those days before this even we who would have imagined what we have today Uh, it's it's all your fault (laughs) 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 see see what you see see what you've created marty (laughs) And, and I mean, the first know, time I met, yeah, the first time I met you, I was in a boat. I'm like, what, what's this dude from Binkelman coming up here? And it was the heroes on the water and you're taking, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, veterans that had uh, PTSD or, yeah. or some kind of disability in the kayak, man. That was awesome. And I'm in my boat and, and you're like, no, I don't want him to go in the boat, Andy. I want him to go into a kayak because yeah. I had taken him, I had taken him around the boat and he was just slaying bass. He caught like a yeah. pike. And then you're, you're like, let's go on the kayak. And, and I'm just like, I'm not getting in one of those things, you know. And then look at, look at me now. I won't even get in a boat now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. But those were fun days, man. Awesome. Yeah. No, totally yeah. awesome. Yeah. And and so we've evolved it now. But I do want to give a couple shout outs here, okay, before we get started. Again, we got Andy Moore on the night. We got quite a crowd on. Uh, Josh Hegarty, Hayden Hall. CJ. CJ's watching. CJ. Get your homework done. <laughs> What's up, CJ? Long time no here, buddy. <laughs> and by the way, on that, shout out to the Auburn Bulldogs. Fourth straight trip in a row to state. Nice. Uh, we're defending three titles. And CJ was CJ and Hayden were part of two of those. And awesome, play, man. Congrats. Yeah, thanks. We play next Tuesday, and it's going to be a grinder. C1 is loaded. It just oh, it, I tell you what, those I played eight man football, so I played like yeah. Humboldt, Stella. Yeah. yeah, I played all those small schools, and they're all loaded. Excellent athletes. I mean, no, I mean the football teams I played were like stacked. I mean, like Humboldt was always hard. I mean, they were just big, yeah. like uh, yeah, crazy. Fall City, Sacred Heart. I mean, all those yeah. schools were really good. Where'd you go to high school? Um, I, I I went to Elkhorn until eighth grade, and then. 
my dad thought I was getting too much trouble or something. So he sent me to a private school, which was probably worse because I got in more trouble there. But uh, Br- Brownell Talbot. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a yeah, pri- yeah. private school in Omaha. Yeah, really. There was like 21 kids in my graduating class. So it was, it was awesome. I mean, I, it was a great school because you have a great, you know, student uh, teacher ratio and yeah. everyone, everyone knows everybody. And it, it, I, it was a great experience. It was awesome for sports because I started all four years, you know, yeah. if I was at a big class A school. I probably wouldn't have started till I was a junior, wow. but uh, I mean, I started, yeah, no, it was, it was awesome. We were really good. We got second in state my senior year. We could, we yeah. should have won it, but yeah. I mean, yeah. I got manhandled. I don't know uh, this. I, I, I forget who he played Spence. I think we played Spencer Naper uh-huh. and this guy was like, I think he went on to play like for Notre Dame or something. He like, he, yeah. he threw me around like a rag doll. I mean, I had no chance, but um, no, we were, we were really good. We were the best. I think we still have the best record in that school. Nice. Yeah, you and me both. Yeah. I got I got shipped from California to Table Rock and had a class of twenty three. From nice, uh, yeah. How many thousands we had in Oceanside, but it was big. Oh, I bet. I and, couldn't imagine that. Yeah. But the key no, that's crazy. Pole, you know, they gave me a fishing pole and a hunting rifle and said, "Go, go out and you know have a good time." And so I did. Hey, yeah. that's what my my mom said. Go out and be constructive. You know, go build a fort or something. Get out of my hair. <laughs> yeah. We we'd play in the woods all day. Come home, come home when the street lights went on every day. You know, we'd build underground forest street we'd have bottle rocket wars and the yeah. i i stole my uh, granddad's old fly fishing tubes we'd load them up with bottle rockets and she, wow. <laughs> it was a blast yeah no oh, good times man okay so you young oh your, your wife's on the phone marty you're breaking up <clears throat> yeah. marty froze <laughs> marty got too old he just he he just can't handle it anymore. Come on. Oh, we froze up. Are you there back? you go. Okay. Yeah, I never left. I'm here. You okay. left. So I'm going to give these shout outs here real quick. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mark Oliver at, at Auburn High School's birthday is today, and, and he loves talking fishing. And he's a history teacher at our school. I just wanted to say happy birthday to Mr. Oliver. Uh, former, happy birthday, man. Yeah. And former state wrestling champion at one time, and he's a wrestling coach at our school. And then also, do you do the fantasy uh, kayak fishing thing? No. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> bet. <laughs> this week, because I can't fish, so why not pick somebody else that's going to win, you know? Uh, yeah, it makes sense. I'm going to win. I'm just saying somebody's, I, I just want to, I just like doing it. Anyway, I picked Eric Siddiqui and Drew Gregory this week, and they're sitting second and fourth. In the oh, cool. Week. Oh, you can like, oh, it's the kayak, like us. Yeah, you bet on kayak. us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's all I didn't know of- that. I thought you were doing like uh, MLF, like I or you know, like Van no, Dam and those guys. No, we, oh, we that's cool. You might even. Be I didn't know that. Country. There's a lot of. Oh, cool. You can pick me for five thousand bucks. That's awesome. I pick myself. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, I picked and I picked uh, Mike Iaconelli, but he's way down. He's yeah, way down he back. is. I know. I don't know what happened to him. He cut his hair and something happened. Or he shaved or something. I don't know. See, that, that's the problem. I, I told my wife before this tournament, she's like, you get a cut. You got to cut this and get a haircut. And my hair is getting really long. And I'm like, it's like Samson and Delilah. I'm not cutting my hair because I'm going to lose all my power. So I, I won. I won. I just won. So I got, I can't cut my hair shave, man. So if I keep winning, man, I'm going to be like a hippie big time in about three wow. months. But I, right. yeah. We're it's all good. Together, we're both, we're both yeah. Together. It's all right. Yeah, it's all good. So, so okay, so let's go into uh, your uh, – your. you went down to Texas uh, to Lake Palestine. It was the first All-American event for the year. Um, by the way, I want to give a shout-out to Joshua Booth and Tyler Cole. That series is just elite. It's just awesome. It's the best. Really. Yeah. And so – It's the best. And do you have your trophy nearby? I do. We Here, can, I'll grab it. Yeah, grab yeah. that. We want, to, we want to take a look at it. He's going to grab his trophy. Guys. This is a piece of work, this trophy. And look at that. Look at that thing. You know, that's artwork right there. People are going to go to your house. <laughs> and say, hey, that's nice artwork you have there. By the way, you guys, if you don't know, Andy... Andy is an artist. I got, I got to, the problem is I got to find room for it. I don't have room for it. <laughs> I'm yeah. such a pack rat, man. I got to, I'm going to have to redo my whole thing now, but that, that'll be the centerpiece. You're going to see up, 
up there's right there's my MKFS one in 2017 that was my centerpiece. Yeah. And th this thing dwarfs that, so I'm gonna have to. I don't know. I don't. Ha I, I need to spend like a day. I'm gonna have to redo my whole setup, but it's it's definitely worth it. I said. I tell you what, Marty. I saw those trophies, and I'm like, I am going to win one of those. And I told my wife, I'm like, that is the coolest trophy I've ever seen, and I want one bad. <laughs> and I was just telling everybody, you're an artist, and 27 years, right? You've been doing that. Uh, yep. It's my 27 years of my business. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna talk in art. I'm going to talk in art. Okay. All right. You ready? Okay. We'll yeah. We'll see how it goes here. Okay. What is your favorite media? <laughs> your favorite well, that's media? a tough one. You know, I, I, uh, I actually studied printmaking. So I have a, I have a degree in printmaking. I studied, I studied under a nationally uh, or internationally known printmaker, Karen Kuntz. Um, and I studied under her for six years. Um, uh, I mean, but I tell you what, it's such a, it's such a hard process because you don't know how it's going to turn out. It all depends on like how much ink you put on, how much pressure is on the press. Um, and I, I wasn't really into surprises. I, I mean, I liked them all, but then, you know, I, my business is all, uh, you know, acrylic and oil. So I just gravitated towards that. So all my paintings now are all waterborne, you know, acrylics. I do just some oil, I'll throw some stain on them. And I use a lot of like shellac, like oil based stuff uh, for effects, but anymore it's all waterborne you know just the, the fumes in my business I, I back in the day i use a ton of oil lacquers and nasty stuff man it was just killing me you know um so the waterborne stuff's really good for the environment it's good for my health so i try to do mostly waterborne stuff but if i'm like marbleizing or glazing i got to use oil there's no other way because you have so much more op open time um i do staining and stuff i mean i do some crazy stuff man I'll, someday i'll show you what i do i do like yeah, it's be great I, I might yeah, even crazy. Do, live, do a Facebook live at your house and go over. Yeah, there. that'd be sure. Cool. Any, anytime, man, I'm not going anywhere. Uh, well, do you ever, do you paint lures? I have, my son keeps bothering me to do it. And I'm just like, I mean, I tie my own, uh, I tie my own bucktails with underspins for wiper. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually used them at uh, Truman last year because of all the shad and I caught, I caught quite a few bass on them. Um, but I see the thing is I'm not, I'm not an airbrush guy. I'm a totally like hands-on pen and paper guy. So I, I pride myself on hand done work. So I don't spray. And you know, most of the lures these days are all sprayed. It's all production stuff. That's just, you know what they all look the same. So I am going to do some, but there's going to be hand painted with like a brush and it, they'll be insane. Like, uh, like crazy cool. I, I hand paint, uh, bottle caps for, uh, my bass club. I'll, I'll go get one of them. They're, they're really cool. Hold on a second. I'm going to answer a question. So Troy, uh, Troy Inky's asking, asking uh, for going to Kentucky Lake here. He has his headphones off right now. But, uh, and hey, welcome aboard. Jennifer. Yes, Andy does bring a crowd. Um, oh, that's cool. What is, let me see. Wow. That's a on a bottle cap. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard to see. But, uh, cool. so I custom paint bottle caps for a club. Like, we fish. We fish the it's an Omaha bass club and we fish every Wednesday night in all the Omaha lakes. So I do, yeah. and I'll do one for Flanagan, Prairie View, Weir Span, Zarinsky every year, just like one. So it's a, called a custom cap. We'll have a custom cap night, and you know we, I get I get a lot more people to fish because everybody wants one of my caps. So here you go. Um, they're cool. So here's mine. Uh, whoop, where am I at here? Oh, nice. Oh, your poker chips. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I love those. Yeah. I did not paint. Oh no, that. that's obviously that's printed. Those are for our uh, those are for our Monday night kids adult league this year. Oh, that's awesome! It gives them something to. Yeah, I love I love it. I mean, I love little yeah. I love little knickknacks. Obviously, look behind me. I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I I love stuff like that, man. It's it's it makes it fun, you know. I just it just yeah. yeah, it's just it's a good time. So we'll get back. Troy Troy Inky was asking if you're going to Kentucky Lake. I am. Yes, sir. Cool. I'm not, but okay. if, 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 if my mental health does not improve, I may just leave. <laughs> I think you need a break from those kids, man. <laughs> so, summer, summer's a long ways away. <laughs> When's your next break? Spring break? No, you're, we, you're... we are on spring break as of four o'clock this afternoon for me. I want spring oh, break. Oh, that's why you're, that's why you're drunk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But tomorrow, though, <laughs> tomorrow though, I'm speaking at a school in Omaha. Oh, cool! Here's the topic: I got invited to speak at an elementary school. 
Nice. Which, which one? Uh, Blackfoot or Blackhawk or something like that. Uh, Black Elk. Black Elk, yes. That's right. That's my neighborhood, man. That's right across yeah. my house. Yeah, so you want to come over for lunch or something? Maybe. <laughs> you I want to get a bite to eat? Look yeah, that's good. So, give, me a, give me a message. Huh? Give me a message. We'll go get a bite to eat or I'll come say hi or something. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, I'm speaking on overfishing. Oh, cool. That's It's an ecology. Uh, I don't know. Something with ecology. I don't know. But anyway, and then I'm going to district speech at Scott. Is that by you? Okay. Too? Yeah. That's right. By me too. Yeah. I'm, I'm right. I'm just south of that. Yep. So I am working a half a day, basically. And I'm well, there you up, go. <laughs> pick up the bass mobile. Uh, nice. Shop. Um, I do have some new wheels. People will see that later on. I got for my retirement present for me. <laughs> nice. Nice, man. That's awesome. Uh, anyway, let's get to your stuff. You know, we brought you on to talk about your trip. So in, in on, I listened to you on Monday on KBN. You, that was awesome to hear your story. So let's make it even better tonight. Just start telling a story about what happened down there. Go ahead. Oh, boy. Like I said in... In that interview, you know, I, I started studying that lake right after right after our championship. I was on the Internet studying, you know, I'm like, heck, yeah, I'm going to Texas in February. It's going to be like 80, 70. I'm going to get out of this Nebraska weather. It's going to be awesome. You know, studied my butt off, had a great game plan, you know, and you're, you're looking at the weather every week. And, you know, it's getting a little colder every week. It's cool. Whatever. 70. I can handle that. 60. I'm like, really? And then it was like 50. And then all of a sudden the, the forecast it was like a high of 28. I'm like, what the heck is someone looking at Alaska or something? This is not right. Sure enough, man. Like the, the day before I got there, it was like 80. And then that huge cold front came in, you know, and, and Dallas got all that ice and stuff. And I'm like, Oh man, this is going to be crazy. Cause my plan was that, you know, the, the bass were is setting up perfect for catching spawning bass. You know, the, 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 the males would have been up, the females are right behind you. We're going to be up North and the upper end are going to be spawning wherever, you know? So, and here I am studying and figuring out my game plan for what, five months. And now I'm thinking, what am I going to do? You know? Um, but I, but I, I, I knew that the weather was setting up perfect for my style of fishing because I, I thrive in that stuff. I do, I do really well in bad weather for some reason. I don't know. I guess it doesn't phase me at all. I mean, um, like if you can remember Spooka or Spooky Bass, mm -hmm. what was it, three years ago in that blizzard, yeah. Yeah. a snowstorm where, where we couldn't leave our partner and our partner had to stay with us. Well, I lost my partner. Yeah. And I honestly, he got like snow blinded and he like went off course and like got lost. And I lost him. I looked, you can only see like five feet in front of you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, um, I, you had to stay, yeah. Yeah, I know you were. Yeah. So the, remember the, remember the rule you had to have your, you yeah. couldn't yeah. leave your partner because we yeah. didn't want anybody dying. Yeah. So here I am. I lose Tom and I'm like, oh my God, I'm saying, how am I going to tell his wife that I killed Tom? I, <laughs> I, I was responsible for Tom and now I've lost him. Um, and, and here I am busting my ass. I catch no fish. I fish that till the bitter end. Yeah. I go back to the parking lot and it's empty. Yeah. There's only one car there. It was James Francis waiting for me to come off. And I'm like, dude, where, where'd everybody go? And he's like, Oh my God, man. You're like, oh, everybody left like two hours ago. You, you, you're the only one out there fishing for two hours. Everyone quit. And I'm like, what? Everyone quit. Yeah. Uh, oh my god that was, that was the best so so anyways um you know i knew i knew uh i knew i was gonna do good so uh pre-fishing day one it, it was brutal uh 28 30 rain just a brutal day i i i wanted to cover i, I probably covered like 10 12 miles i started mid lake went all the way up to the kick a poop uh, poked around there i caught fish here and there um you know but they're scattered you know what happens when this happens to those fish, they kind of go into shock. You know, they're, they're, they're ready. They got one thing on their mind. They're going to, they want to spawn. But mm -hmm. in Texas and any warm weather state, when these cold fronts come through, the bass act differently than they do here big time. They're just like, I thought they're just going to be like, you know, locked up. There's no way. Um, so I, I did find, I found some fish, but I wasn't real confident. I didn't have, I was like, this, oh, great. This is going to not be good. I'm going to have to try something else. And then, I'm flying back, you know, home and I slam into a stump so hard. I almost fly off. I, I mean, you know how it is when you hit a stump going five miles per hour. 
I like stop and I literally almost went over the front of my kayak. I'm like, Oh my God. You know, so my drives, it's barely working. So uh, I wasn't really thinking. I mean, I was thinking, I thought it was brilliant if I put it in reverse and then take it out and flip it around and put it in, I'm going to go super fast and hit another stump and I'm going to bend it straight so I can go. Well, the rod doesn't move. It stays in the same spot. So I hit another stump really hard and I bent my rod, dude. My, my rod was like that. And my drive, it wouldn't, it was like, I couldn't go. And I'm like a mile away. So I had a paddle and I, I just had the little emergency paddle. I didn't have like a real paddle. Yeah. So I'm like a mile away, but luckily I, I, I always go in. Like when I pre-fish, I always try to go into the wind all day. So at the end of the day, it's an easier ride back and I can just kind of coast back. So literally I, I was paddle i was paddling all the way back like a mile it took me about an hour but it was, it was all good because i i was kind of i needed a i needed a new plan for tomorrow pre-fishing and, and figure out what i'm gonna do because that that plan wasn't working i didn't find what i wanted at all i didn't find any grass yeah. i didn't find a i didn't find a bunch of fish i just found them scattered so uh you know i regrouped thought about what am i gonna do day two i hit this area that's called Salim bay really cool it was like it, it was almost like a different little lake, you know, and it was calm, beautiful. I mean, some of the, I mean, I tell you what, some, there's a lot of money on that lake. Some of these houses are like insane. Some of these docks in these houses, it's just, I wish I would have taken pictures because it, it's just, it's like a different world, you know? I mean, I would, I would love to have something like that someday. It was so, it was so freaking cool. Yeah. But anyways, I found fish. I, I, I literally probably could catch a fish on every dock if I really wanted to, like, just really just, like, mm -hmm. sit tight and just work them because there's fish on every dock, you know. It's just a matter of getting the bite. So I, ha I had that. I, I could have I filled a curve there. And then I hit a, an area mid-lake. The water was nice. It was clear. It was, like, eight, you know, eight, nine-inch visibility. We're up in Kickapoo. It was just super muddy. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to find some cleaner water. Um, so... I found a really good spot. I mean, it was loaded with fish and they weren't taking my jig. They weren't taking anything. And like I said, in that KBN, I had to pull out my putter. And if uh, uh, the guys that know me know, know what I use, they know what my secret weapon is. They know how I do it. So I pulled out my putter and yeah, I, I no problem catching fish. And I, I, I missed, I missed some really good bites. And, you know, you know, the bass in, in Texas are extremely territorial. They'll, they'll stay there. They'll be there. So I knew that I knew that I, the ones I missed pre-fishing and I missed some good bites. You know, some of the bites were, it was weird. Like you really had to watch. I mean, it was, it was, it was total concentration. Now, now pre-fishing day two was easy because it wasn't, it was a nice day. I mean, nice day, meaning like 32, but it, for me, that was really nice. You know, no rain or anything. It was cloudy, but 32 is freaking balmy to me, you know, no worries here, but. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I had a plan. I'm, I'm good. I go home. I'm going to hit that. I'm going to hit the secondary safe saline, saline bay for my, my backup. So I go home tournament day. Number one was absolutely brutal, like torrential rain on and off rain, cold wind, a little bit of sleet. Um, but I, it, it, it didn't phase me. I knew what I needed to do. And I tell you what, man, it, it, it really took a lot of concentration, like super, super focused because the, the fish, you couldn't feel it. You just see a line move and I would give it like a three count and I would set the hook and I'd have one. It, and you know what the, the, the craziest thing about this whole thing, the guy that won second, um, he was on an interview last night with me. He's, he's from there. He, he grew up. And it has fished Palestine and Fork his whole life. Was that Michael? Yes. Michael. Okay. And I'm, Go yeah. Ahead. Go ahead. And I'm so, I, I was so humbled that I was like, I just can't believe that I actually beat somebody that is like his home lake, you know, and, and, and like the back of his hand. And his story was exactly like my story. Like he tried his jig, he caught a few, but it wasn't working. He had to go to a finesse. Yeah. And he said the color. It was exactly the same color I was using. He yeah. said the line thing. He said he was watching the line. You could see the line movie. He set the hook. And my, I'm getting shivers. I'm getting chills. I'm like, no way. This is crazy how some dude from Nebraska yeah. comes down here on this guy's lake yeah. and has never met him, no idea, yeah. never even talked to him. Yeah. And I'm basically doing the exact same thing he was doing. Yeah. And we both, he got second, I got first. It was crazy. Now, let me go back a few years with Michael. 
Okay. Michael's a good friend of mine too. From oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, great I, guy. Great, great oh, guy. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I had no, I, I had no idea. I, first time yeah. I've ever met him. Super cool guy. Oh yeah, he went out of his way to help me when I was first. I mean, I when, remember the old Lake Fork uh, Tournament of Champions, Kevin. Oh, yeah, Kevin, I was in one. I was 2016. Yeah. yeah. Kevin, Kevin, and 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 Josh and Kate, we were all. Yeah, there. I was with them. Yeah, yeah I went with all those guys. Yep. It was the year the front came through. And okay. Yeah, I remember. I'm fishing in a bay. I hit two 18s right away, then nothing, nothing, nothing. And I went to this bay. I was catching 13 and a quarter, 13 and a half. Couldn't get a 14. He comes by. He goes, what you doing? And remember, Michael <laughs> goes, what you doing, man? And I go, well, I'm drop shot. And I was drop shotting on a, on a, on a pile at about 12. Right. He go, he's throwing a crankbait. He's just zipping it, zipping it. Yep. He goes, man, we throw a rope down here. <laughs> oh that's we, funny we, we've converted him a little bit to the finesse world <laughs> oh yeah no he was he was finesse in that tournament he yeah. says he wasn't he and he was using exactly what i was using i guarantee it and i was blown away like i said i got shivers when he's telling the story i mean I, did, I didn't say anything during that interview i got off and i told my wife and like i even called my son and i'm like yeah. you're not gonna believe us how what like how it happens like we both were in tune to what we needed to do and Obviously, he knew what he needed to do, and yeah. I just figured it out. But that's that's what I do when I need bites, man. That's what I use. You know, I pull out the putter. Um, and I tell you what, they, it, even at Lake Fork, that tournament, I had the bites to oh, – I probably could have won it. I, I hooked into so many fish, but they just schooled me in the stumps. You know, I couldn't – I had to get on top of them, and, and they just mm – -hmm. I was fishing too deep. I was in 12 feet of water, but that's the only place I was getting bites, and they were wrapping me around stumps. You know, here I caught that 20 and a quarter <clears> – <throat> excuse me mm – -hmm. and uh, – it was easy. There's no stumps. It, 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 every fish I caught was running deep, but there was no stumps to tangle me up on. So it was awesome. I totally could catch them. But yeah, no, that, that tournament was crazy, man. No, no, Mike, Michael was a great guy. I had no idea. But and like I said, I was super humbled because it's his lake and he's grown up and fishing his whole life, man. I had no idea, you know, and, and that's another thing, you know, about like your mental game too. Like when I go into tournaments, I like in the past, I'd be like, Oh, great. I'm, I'm going to fish Truman against all these Missouri guys that fish it every day. I'm going to get my butt kicked, you know, but you can't think that way. You know, it's, it's not really uh, uh, bottom line. It's not really you against them. You know, it's, it's you against you and the fish, you know, yeah, and, and you always have to approach a tournament like that, that you got to tune everything out. It's, it's you against the fish, period. It doesn't matter who's fishing. If they're a guide, if they fish it every day, seven days a week, it doesn't matter. You know, you do your thing. And you do it well, and you're going to have a good chance at, at winning, you know. And, and anybody in these tournaments can win. We're all good fishermen. It's just it's just a matter of right place, right time, right lure, right everything, man. And that's that's what happened to me, you know. So, like, um, so yeah, day, day one, uh, it, it was absolutely brutal. And the, I, I, I filled my car, I think, by, like, uh, 1 o'clock, whatever. And that's when I kind of did an upgrade mission on the docks and caught a couple upgrades on a big, a big lipless um you know went went home i took my clothes off and they literally weighed like i didn't even know i mean i was so wet marty my clothes probably weighed like 15 20 pounds i'm not kidding you i mean i had probably six layers on because it, it was so cold and then my wallet was wet i was literally bone i started kind of shivering when i got back to the hotel and that that's not a good sign you know i know i think there's a couple anglers that almost got hypothermia and they got off the water which you know safety first always if you're I mean, it's not a big guy thing. Hey, I'm a big, tough Andy. I can take it. You know, if I'm out there shivering, I'm coming in because I know that's when, that's when your body's telling you, you know, you're done. I'm, I'm trying to warm you up, Andy, and you need to get off because, or get dry and then, and then go back out. But I, I was cool all day. I wasn't shivering at all. I was just super focused. But so, I, you know, after day one, I was, I, I had a full car. I think there's only five of us that had a full car out of what, like 55 guys. So I was like, cool, man. I'm, I'm in good position for tomorrow, but mm -hmm. tomorrow it's going to be sunny and nice. And you know, as well as I do, the guys that are fishing this are freaking good fishermen, you know, and they're going to, there's going to be some guys that are going to put up a hundred inches tomorrow. I know. It. And sure enough, like three, like Jordan Westerman, Brian Hillman, um, Desmond, uh, some other guy from Texas, I think his name's Desmond something. I think they all put up like a hundred inches and Brian Hillman, he only had four fish on uh, day one and he put up five day two. And if he would have had five and five, he would have crushed everybody. Cause he had like a huge score day two, but 
So, you know, day two, I was, I was a little nervous, you know, I mean, you know me, like if you, you look at my past, I've done really well on day one, you know, I'm really good at, at one day tournaments, you know, but day two tournaments are a different beast. You got to, your strategy has to be completely different. You don't want to burn your spot. And, and ironically, I fished this spot both days. I pounded it. I peppered the heck out of it, but I, there's tons of fish there and I, I missed a lot and I know they weren't going to move, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so day two, I'm like, you know, business as usual. I, I just treated it as another day, like forget day one, you know, I, and it, I'm, and I'm getting really better at submitting my fish on the water. I'm so glad I did because I had a lot of uh, family and friends that really enjoyed that. They like, they, they reached out to me and said, you know, that was the, that was the funnest thing ever watching, watching that. And I'm like, yeah, because I normally, I, you know me, I, I never used to submit fish yeah, on the yeah. water. I, I would be zero all day long. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, I submit my fish and everyone would call me a sandbagger. And I'm, I'm like, I'm not a sandbagger. I can't do that stuff on the water I'm fishing. I'm not, I'm not wasting my time downloading yeah. fish, you know? You, you were not a sandbagger. You were a technic, tech, technical, technical disadvantaged fisherman. I was technically challenged. <laughs> yeah there you go yeah i just i swear to god and if you like like who like tom fisher or whatever that would be with me at the end of the tournament they needed to stay away from andy yeah. like he don't don't talk to him don't look at him because he's going to be a freak for about a half hour going through all of his pictures yeah, trying to submit them oh, nightmare dude I swear to God, I'm so glad I do it now. It's so easy. Where, where, why haven't I been doing this? I catch a fish, I download it. I'm done. You're in a pickup like this the whole time. I mean, yeah. You're in there. You didn't even look up. Oh, yeah. You're on your phone down nope. there. Yeah. Leave me alone. And then I have to come out and freak. I got to call the tournament director because I, I can't help. I can't download a fish. I'm running out of time. I got all my fish. Help me. And, you know, I, I think the tournament directors got tired of me calling. Like their phone ring. Oh, it's. Oh, it's freaking Andy again. He's having problems. A little, you know, but I, I tell you what, man, I, I'm so glad I do it now. It's, yeah. it's really cool. You know, I, I never look at the leaderboard or anything, you know, and uh, quite honestly, it, you know, I, I really didn't look a lot this, this tournament either. I mean, I looked, I, I won't lie. I did look like once and I was like, oh my God, I'm first, but yeah. you can't, you can't do that. You got to just put it out of your head, you know, because it, do, it doesn't matter. You just, you got to fish till the end and pretend you're in last place till the end. You got to fish hard, fish hard till it's done, man. Um, so I'm so glad. I was what was that? The lines. I was reading between the lines on that. And you were leading, and there were two guys that had zeros there, and I go, they've got fish. The question is, does Andy have enough to stay ahead of them? Right. So that's, that's a spectator's view of it, going, you know yeah. those guys had fish. But a lot of people looking at that board do not know that they don't. Know they don't know that, right? But but we know that. Yeah. So like yeah. the 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 guy from Oklahoma day one had eight eight inches, and as the day went on, he had zero, and he downloaded his fish kind of late. And I'm like, he's gonna he's I'm gonna I'm not gonna win, you know. I was kind of thinking that, and then I'm like, catch and release, you know. That's that's what I do. It's kind of funny, like when you have negative thoughts, <clears throat> you got you catch and release them, just like fishing. Cause you know me, your mind starts watering, wandering on the water and you can't, as soon as you lose focus of fishing, it, it, it you can't, it, you're not going to do good. So I'll, I'll take those thoughts and I'll catch them in my hand and I'll throw them away and release them. And it, that really helps me to get back in focus. But yeah, man, I, I, I knew that that guy could have like crushed me. And I, I, I would say I was getting a little worried, but I, I was, I, you know, day two, you know, I was like, I had my three fish, I think by noon and, uh, I, I was saying to myself, if I can't catch two more fish in five hours, I, you know what, suck. <laughs> but uh, I did. So, yeah. So um, it's it's kind of like this, Andy. You think about this, you know, as far as the focus goes. I thought about this, and I'll, I don't know how, how you want to relate it, but, you know, like the Indy 500, they're going in circles and circles and circles, and they're focused, and, they're, and, and the guys that stay focused stay in the lead, and then you have a few guys that spin out. Well, it's the same exact thing in these tournaments where you have to stay focused and not and and you'll see guys spin out and they'll just oh, yeah. and they'll they'll load up or or whatever. You see and it all the time, man. Just, that's that's just what happened to him that day. You, you know? see it all the time. I, I have seen it. And I honestly, I, I have never 
I, I fish till the end. You know, I've never, ever, I never give up, you know, but you know, you can't, I, you don't, I don't want to like harp or come down on anybody that stops early because everybody's different. Everybody's destiny. Everybody's destiny is different. I don't know what's going on in their life. Maybe they got, maybe they're in a bad place and they got yeah. issues going on or whatever. And they, they, yeah. you know, spun out, you know, but um, it, it happens, man. All the time. I see it all the time in this tournament. I think a lot of people that, that on, on day one, it was so brutal. I, I, I know a ton of people left early and quit. I, I hate saying quit because yeah. they're not really quitting. They're, they're, and they're not really giving up. I think they're just like maybe regrouping or I can't handle it anymore. I'm not a quitter. You know, some of them feel so bad that they are, you know, but you, you got to do what you got to do. If you don't feel safe out there, you know, get off the water. We don't want anybody dying out there. You know, it's not, it's just, it's just fishing, you know, it's just, it's just fishing. Don't, you know, I, I hate saying when people quit because, you know, it's, it's, but yeah, man, that, that, I tell you what, day one, it spun a lot of people out for sure. So, so go to day two now, what happened day two? So, so day two, like I said, I was, I was a little nervous because I knew the weather was going to be nice. Day one was my ball game. Day one, I thrive in that weather. It doesn't phase me. I always do well in really bad weather. Um, I, I love fishing in bad weather. I embrace it. You know me, I'm a huge ice fisherman, man. I love going out and just, I, don't really, I like just staring it in the face and go bring it. You know, I just, I just love that adrenaline rush of bad weather. I don't know what it is. I've always, I've always loved it. I mean, when I was, I think I was like, I want to say like four or five years old, I was up in Okaboji and it rained the whole time. And I literally was sitting on a dock all day long. I'm like five years old in the rain and all the parents are in this house. They have long docks. Look at me like, what's this crazy kid doing? I'll never forget. I was using a big red and white bobber with a worm. And the waves were so high and my, you'd see my bobber and then it would disappear behind the wave. And then I'd see my bobber and then it'd disappear. And then the wave would come up, my bobber would be gone. And like, I got one <clears throat> and I was catching sheephead. Wow. Big ass buffalo fish. Like a five-year-old kid, it didn't matter what you caught, you know, a fish was a fish. I didn't, right, right, right. I didn't know. They fought so hard. I had a blast. My dad had to go buy me more worms. I was literally just out there all day in the rain, man. I was just having a blast. So I, I've always been conditioned for that. I just, I just love fishing the elements. So anyways, day two, I knew I was going to have my work cut out for me because it was going to be nice to weather. And these guys were going to, they were going to put up some numbers. So I, I had a, I, I had a really uh, focus and I didn't want to blow it, man. I, I, I hate it when I'm in position to win it and I blow it. So I, I told myself, I honestly manifested it all night in bed. I, I manifested myself holding that trophy. I manifested my speech. I manifested, I'm going to catch five fish. I manifested, I'm going to win. I kept telling myself, you're going to win. You're going to win. There's no way you're going to lose this, Andy. Do not lose this. It's in your hands. Don't, you know, I hate to say it, but don't F it up. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so day, day two, you know, same plan, same everything. I hit the same spot. Sure enough, everything it's, it's on, you know, <clears throat> I cut my first fish is at 20 and a quarter. I catch wow. it on my putter. Um, it, it, I, I, oh, it, so I, I didn't tell this story. This is freaking hilarious. So I, I hook into it and I know it's a big fish. It's huge. It, I, I, it starts, my drag was not set light enough in it almost. So I, I'm loosening up my drag a little bit. All of a sudden my drag, it's gone. I can't reel. I'm like, I'm going to lose it. I'm, a, I'm trying to stretch. I literally hand over hand the fish. For one second, I'm holding this fish. It's fighting. I hold. I'm holding my rod under my chin. I'm tightening my. I'm tightening up a little bit. I get tension, and I'm like, I'm. A, there's no way I'm gonna catch it. It's still on, and I got it. Oh my god! Thank God. <clears throat> so I fought it for a few more minutes. I get. You know, I'm fighting it. I get it up in the net. I'm just like, I almost threw up. I'm just like, oh my god! I can't believe that just happened. I thought I just lost it. Wow. So I, I get that. I, I told the story about singing the song and that's, that's no lie that happened, but if wow. you, you heard the story, so I don't need to repeat it. But anyways, so literally like 15 minutes later, Marty, I hook into the biggest bass of my life. Um, it was, it, it, it was eight or nine pounds easily. And I wasn't, I, I'm, I'm, I, I hate myself because I wasn't ready for it. Mm -hmm. And I thrive myself on expectancy. You know, I always expect to catch a big fish, no matter what I'm always mentally prepared for that. And after I caught that 20 and a quarter, I don't know what happened. I think I, I think I just lost focus a little bit. Or I just got a little too excited. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know. And I wasn't ready for that fish. I swear to God, Marty, that thing, it was 23, 24, easy, eight or nine pounder. Jeez. I laid into it and, and it was, 
it was like, I, I laid into a stump and I'm like, Oh my God. You know, I'm thinking I'm, I'm, I probably said it out loud. I'm talking to myself all day. I'm like, Oh my God, this thing jumped. And it was just like, and it spit my lure. And I was like, I was like, what just happened? You know, and I'm just like, <laughs> like, it's okay. It's early. You know, as well as I do, it's yeah. better to lose a big fish early yeah. than it is with like 10 minutes to go in the tournament. I, I did that at Possum Kingdom, just like that. I lost. The yeah. Game, just like that. Yeah. And those are heartbreakers. Those will, yeah. those will affect you for days and if not months that will haunt you. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, those, those, those negative thoughts are hard to release, you know, and it's good to keep onto those thoughts because it, it next time you're not, that's not going to happen. So I do keep onto those thoughts a long time, maybe too long because I don't want it to happen again. But, um, that fish was so huge. And it, I, I'm, I, kinda, I guess I'm kind of glad I lost it because I, I don't have a GoPro. I wouldn't have been able to take a picture of it or anything. My son was harping me, get a GoPro. You're going to catch your PB. It's going to be a, you're going to catch a 12 pounder and you're going to hate yourself because you're not going to get a picture of it. I'm like, it's all good. I'll get a picture of it on the board. You know, I don't, I don't need me in the picture, whatever, you know, but I, I had my personal best and lost it. But anyway, so regroup. I took a deep breath. Um, I looked up at the sky. I said a little, I, I talked to my dad for a minute. I always talk to my dad on the water. He's, he, uh, you know, you know me, I'm super spiritual. My dad, my dad's with me all the time. I mean, mm -hmm. I, there was like a duck. My dad was a huge duck hunter. Um, after the tournament, when I pulled up this, this, uh, mallard duck was just hanging out with me. Like when I was loading up, I almost cried. And I was like, I really said, Hey dad, you know, I, I did. I say, Hey dad to it. I know that might sound weird to people, but it's, it's not, you know, it's not to me because I, I'm really believing that stuff that, um, I mean, if, if you open your mind to that stuff, it's, it, it's, it's crazy. It's true, man. I mean, it, you, I mean, some people probably think I'm weird, but I'm, I mean, anyway, so, um, yeah, so, so I lose that big fish. I regroup. Um, I uh, managed to – I think I had my limit by, like, one. Mm -hmm. And then I took a pee because I was holding my pee all day. <laughs> you know, it's, it's hard. You don't think about it. And I literally peed for probably, like, five minutes. <laughs> um, and then I <laughs> – well, there was houses around. There's pee. You know, I couldn't yeah. – I was just like, how am I going to pee? You know, and then you don't – Wait, don't pee. Just pee. You can pee your pants. You got a fish. Just, if you got pee with that, just let it go. I mean, it's, it's just, yeah. it's just pee. You know, you can, you can wash your clothes afterwards, whatever. So, um, I, I, I go, I, I fill my car, I eat my lunch, I relax, you know, but I'm like, it's not good enough. I, I, this is not going to win it. I need yeah. bigger fish. I knew there was bigger fish there, but I couldn't get them. I missed that one. I stung it. There's no way I'm, there's no way it's going to bite again. I stung a couple more earlier. There's no way they're going to bite again. Um, so I, I did an upgrade mission and I went on these docks and, and on a Sunday, the wind was blowing really good. Was, there was yeah. some gusts of 20 and, and, and it was out of the, the way that lake is aligned, the, the waves were coming down the lake and I was in the main lake. So I was in two to three, you know, maybe a four footer. I don't know. I wasn't really paying attention, but there are big waves. And I told you that story. I, I caught the dock. That's why I caught the dock, but I upgraded, I think I caught an 18, um, and a 16. So on my card, I had a 13 and a 14. That I had to get rid of, or there was no way in heck I was going to win. And, um, sure enough, I upgraded two fish. I think I caught a, <clears throat> excuse me. I think I caught a 16, um, and an 18 maybe. I'm not sure. So I upgraded, felt really good. Um, but I still in the back of my head, I didn't think I won, you know, I, I really honestly, but I, I couldn't think like that. I had to keep being positive going. I, I got this. I won this, you know, I, I won, but I, honestly, deep down, I was really nervous. Like deep down, I was thinking, I, I'm, I'm definitely in the top five. I'm in the money because I was the only one that had 10, or one of two people only had 10 fish, you know? So I knew that I was in the money for sure. And that, you know, going into any tournament, that's my goal is top 10. Um, my mm -hmm. secondary goal is obviously in the money, but you know, top 10 in any tournament's good. I mean, that's, you, you shouldn't look down on yourself and finish in the top 10 against the people we fish against. I mean, you know, as well as I do, there's, there's some solid sticks in the Midwest, like some of the best in the nation. I mean, and in, in Nebraska, we have some of the best fishermen in the na nation, hands down. I mean, you got based the work on that, real quick, based on that, based on that, you realize Nebraska's done pretty well in major events down there. Oh you've yeah, got, totally. You've got, a, you've got a signature win. Yep. Nate Gloria has two signature wins down there. Yep. Yep. Um, uh, Long, uh, Chris Longshore got a second. Valdez yep. got a fifth. I've got a seventh. I, I think Kevin's up there too in the top. I'm pretty yeah. sure he had one too up there. Yep. Jo Joshua at, at Lake Joshua Fork did good one year. Yep. Yeah. 
So um, we've all got, and then and then uh, last year James and and Christine and I all finished in the money at the Bassmaster Classic down. That's there. right. You guys represented really well, but you had a couple of Missouri guys on your team, didn't you? Well, that was that was. Uh, yeah, that doesn't that doesn't count then. Yeah, okay. I'm kidding. Well, the other, that was Louisiana, the other one that we did well. <laughs> right. You guys didn't you guys win that? Yeah, we won the national uh, team. Yeah, team. That, that yeah, that's awesome. That was a good team, man. You had who did you have Josh Booth on there and Josh Richie Booth, McMichael? Richie, yeah. Ricky McNasty. Uh, we had uh, James. Damn, he's a good fisherman. And we had Jer Jeremiah Smith out of Texas. Never met, never met him. Yeah, great. But, yeah, great. But anyway, that was that was yeah, that was a solid team, man. That. Yeah, that was a solid team. Yeah, you guys, you guys did. I mean, James Francis. I mean, that dude. I mean, that last year was that was such a pleasure to watch uh, Kevin and James go at it. I yeah. to to stay that consistent all season yeah. is unbelievable. I mean, I I don't know if I could do it, you know, but I swear to God, that was that was a treat watching those two guys last year. I mean, I that was insane. I mean, it was just back and forth all year long. I mean, I don't. I, I'm so happy for Kevin because. You know, he had he had a bad couple of years. You know, he wasn't he wasn't in the right place mentally. I, I don't think I don't know what was going on with him, but that that dude's the, one of the best fishermen I've ever yeah. met or well, known. Well, you know, and I was gonna say earlier, but, I, I fished alongside both of you at times. You were two of the most patient fishermen anglers that I've ever been around. And that's totally successful. You you yeah. you will sit there and barely tweak that thing. And yep. same with Kevin, he's got that he's got that lean. Mm -hmm. He's got that lean. <laughs> no, no, I, I and Kevin and I, uh, we've had a lot of conver You know, we've 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 fished together a lot. You know, we've we've traveled a lot. I mean, we've we've. I, I love Kevin. He's he's the. I swear, to God, he's got a heart of gold. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. But um, you know, we've talked about that, like the subtleties of of what we do and 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 visualizing. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people don't do this. I I visualize my lure under the water, what it's doing. Oh, absolutely. You know, I, yeah, I, I mean, I'm, 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 I can see my lure in the water and every little, you know, and I have an aquarium in here and I, I practice in my aquarium all the time. I put every lure in my aquarium to see how it works, see the, see the subtleties of the lure, see how the different weights of the heads work on the different plastics, mm -hmm. seeing how line, the different weight of line makes, uh, it manipulates the lure. I mean, it, it all matters, you know, and in this tournament, it mattered. I swear to God, it mattered big time because they, they like, they, I was hypnotizing them because my, the fall on my lure was like, mm -hmm. you know, and then I would just let it sit. And then I would just barely, I, and it was so hard. Like I said, I had to be, I had to be zoned because the weather was so bad. But yeah. if, if you're finesse fishing and the wind, even if the wind, the, the wind could move my line. So I literally had to line myself up and cast straight into the wind. If I was anywhere right or left, the wind would move my line and then it would ruin that cast. There's no way. And there were some times where I had a cast over my head with the wind and I was literally fishing like this behind my back. Mm -hmm. And I caught fish like that because, you know, I, my, I'm falling apart. My shoulders, my backs. I mean, I couldn't, you know how, you know, how you're fishing behind you and you got to go like that. It just, it kills me. So I was doing that. But no, I mean, Kevin, Kevin and I, we've had some pretty in-depth conversations on, on the subtleties of, of fishing and everything. So yeah, we, yeah, he, he gets it. And, 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 and the, the cool thing about Kevin, he's so versatile, you know, and I, I pride myself on that too. I don't, I don't just do one thing. I can do it all, you know, and that's, that's, that's hard, you know, to, to do it all. You know, some guys are known for one thing, you know, maybe two things, but I mean, I can do it all, but I'm, I am, I guess my forte would be finesse fishing. Like I'm really, I'm really good at that just because of the patience, the, the mental focus and the subtleties of it. And like you were saying about the subtleties, like I'll be on the edge where the water's clear in the lake, you know how it's really clear on the edges and I'll yeah. take my lure before I cast it and I'll, I'll dink it along there to see what it looks like. Always, always. And then the, I always, always do that at the boat ramp, always at the boat ramp before I go in. And I'm always looking at, it's like this tournament is pretty cool. I always, uh, always walk around the boat ramp, always look for crawdads. So on this boat ramp, you, yeah. there's tons of lures, yeah. like there's tons of plastics, you know, from all the boat guys. And I was looking at what colors, yeah. And a lot of them were using, a lot of them were the same colors and I was using the same colors. So I kind of knew there, a lot of them were a lot of craw, you know, a lot of, a lot of creature baits, a lot of stick baits and stuff. And then I was looking for crawdads. The crawdads weren't out. I think it was really cold, but yeah. I'm always looking for, uh, for, uh, bird poop, uh, mm -hmm. to see what the bird, what they're pooping out. Cause a lot of times they'll, there'll be crawdads in there. And, and that's key. Once if you, if you oh, find yeah. a crawdad, the color of the crawdad and you match that your, your money, Absolutely. you know, and a lot of times. 
Yep. Yeah. Yep. A, lot, a lot of times. Yep. A lot of times I'm guessing. Way. Yep. And you can always, I mean, it's, you can always guess, you know, I'm mean, sometimes fish will hit anything, but sometimes it does matter. You know, you got to match the hatch and I'm always, I'm always looking for crawdads, always looking for uh, stuff on the boat ramp anywhere I fish before I fish just to get, you know, you got it. You got to You got to do it all, man. You know, it's not just showing up and fishing. You have to, you really have to do it all. You have to see what's, see what they're, what, what's out there, what people are using. I mean, it's, it's not, it's, it's pretty complicated, you know, and you know that as well as I do, you know, if you really get into it, it's, it's, it's not easy. It's super complicated. You really have to pay attention to everything, all the signs, the birds, the, uh, what's going on out above you. You know, you have to pay attention to everything. You know, uh, one minute the fish aren't biting the next minute. There's a bunch of shad over there. There's birds and all the fish are going nuts. You better be better have your eyes open, you know, and pay attention. Yeah, you betcha. Okay. I got a couple questions here for you. And of course you end up getting first in the tournament. And I felt good. I, you know what I, and I, and I know you're a very humble guy, very humble. There's no doubt in my mind and everybody knows that. But when you, when you offered, you, 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 you get, there's all these guys there and they stayed for the ceremony and they're probably frozen and, you know, worn out. And you said, Hey guys, you know what, for everybody that's here, we're going to have a drawing and somebody's going to get $300 to kind of take care of their expenses. I thought that was the coolest gesture, man, just so you know. And, and I really got, I got emotional on that because I was like, man, that's what it's about right there. That's cool. So that's so, yeah. you know, thank you, man. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, I don't know. I was just, I was sitting there and, uh, it might've been more motivation for me to win. Cause I was sitting there day two. And I'm like, I'm, yeah. I talk to myself, you know, I, everybody knows that I talk to myself all day on the water. I sing, you know, I'm, I'm a drummer. So I, <laughs> I'm tone deaf. So I don't sing in public. My brother, <laughs> my brother's a, a musician too. He plays piano and sings. He's a pretty good singer. And I don't even dare sing around him. Cause he'll be like, dude, you're off. You don't, don't even sing. You, you suck at singing. But I love I love singing, so I sing by myself on the water. Nobody cares. Fish don't care. Birds don't care. You know they enjoy it. Fish love it because I get bites when I'm singing. But um, yeah, so I, I was sitting out there thinking. I'm like, you know what? When I I didn't say if I said when I win, yeah. Yeah. when I win, I will donate some of this money to somebody. You know, it, it, it's it's tough right now, Marty. You know, gas gas is high. Yeah. The COVID people people are hurting. People don't have money um you know I, I i i'm in a good place right now i'm a good place mentally i'm i'm doing okay you know i had a good year in my business i i could i, I was able to do it mm -hmm. um and I, I was saying to myself on the water i i promised myself when i win i will donate some of this money i didn't know how much i didn't really thought about it you know i was two three hundred four hundred bucks probably would have been a pretty cool you know a lot of these younger guys you know i, I remember when i you know when i started like 2013 14 my kids were younger and I was hurt, man. I paycheck to paycheck. I, some of these tournaments, mm -hmm. I couldn't go because I didn't have money. Um, you know, I had to sleep in my truck. Um, I had to flip over cushions for change just to get gas money to go, you know, borrowing money, borrowing stuff for lures. I mean, it, it sucked. It was a grind, but I, I was going to do anything to, to do what I love, you know. And yeah. so, yeah, I'm in, a, I'm in a pretty good place right now. I can afford to do it and I can afford to take off the time to do it. So I'm just thinking, you know, like, I'm going to just pay it forward, you know, and, it, it, it was pretty funny. Uh, I I told Tyler that, and Tyler's like, "Yeah, let's do it." So we drew, randomly drew a number, and it was Michael, the guy that got second. <laughs> and he yeah. was like, "Yeah, he's like, well, I don't need the money, you know." And then yeah, yeah, no, yeah. so we drew, yeah. So so we drew another number, and uh, it was uh, somebody that wasn't there. And I'm like, "No, I want I want it to be somebody here that somebody that actually stayed for the award ceremony." Yeah. So I, I, I get it. You know, I, I understand. I, I've had to leave maybe once, but I always pride myself on staying for every yeah. ceremony and shaking everybody's hand. I think that's what it's all about. But I totally understand if you got to go home. I mean, you know, it's a long drive. You got kids, you got obligations, you got family, you've been gone from your wife and your kids for four days, you know, get your butt home. It's all good. You know, I get it. But I just wanted to reward somebody that actually stayed. I mean, not many people stayed. There's only like probably 12 or 15 people at the award ceremony. And it's kind of anticlimactic for me, but I mean, I didn't care. I mean, whatever. There's I, there, Jordan Westerman was there. Brady was there. I, you know, those were really the only two guys I knew. So we chatted. I mean, I, I love the, I love Jordan. He's, yeah. he's such a good fisherman too, man. He struggled day one, but he really brought it day two. And you know, he's, he's a good guy, yeah. but, uh, who won? So, who won? Uh, I, 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 I'm going to probably keep, you'll find out eventually, but so, oh. so how, 
have a story. I'll, I'll tell you. Oh, maybe I won't. I don't know if I want to. Maybe, maybe. You'll, fi you'll find out. I, I tell you what, I'll tell you. I'll tell you tomorrow <clears throat> when you. Oh, I'll message you after this. I'm gonna just keep okay, it anonymous. Okay, all right. Yeah, we don't. Okay. I yeah, yeah. It. But but uh, it's Tyler. You know. I, I, so then you know we drew another number. It was somebody that wasn't there, and uh, I'm like, okay, this could go on forever. Let's just uh, let's go. I'm out. We'll just we'll figure something out. Maybe I'll. I'll donate it to the classic at the end. You guys can buy some more prizes or something, whatever, you know, cause yeah. this just ain't working, you know? And so I'm on my way home. I'm like, well, <laughs> my, I'm on my way home. My phone is just freaking blowing up. I literally, I could, you know, I'm driving. I, I literally had like 500 <laughs> messages and my oh, phone's yeah. like smoking. My phone's smoking. It's, yeah. oh, it's yeah. just like, bleh, my phone couldn't handle it all. So I, I couldn't look at my phone. I'm driving. I got I got to get home. You know, I'm going through Muskogee and like some pretty redneck places. You know, and I kind of have to be on high alert. And I did run into. I had to pee a couple times, man. And I went to this one gas station. And I was like, I I never get scared. And I was there was a couple. You know, maybe some meth going on. I don't know. But I I literally came out of the one, and there was this. I felt horrible for her. I felt so bad. She wanted to ride so bad, and I just looked at her. And I'm like. I, I felt horrible, man. I, I just said, I'm, I'm so sorry. I can't help you. God bless you. You know, you will, you will find your right path. And I, I left, I, I just, I felt horrible, but anyways, um, so my phone's blowing up and I, I stopped and I had to look at a few, you know, and I literally had like a hundred messages. So I'm just like, Oh crap. So one was from Tyler and Tyler was like, Hey, I, I got somebody, I got somebody that could really use it. That was in this tournament that I, I know they're hurting. Oh, wow. So I'm like, yeah, that's cool. So I, I messaged the person and the person was like, oh my God, you do not believe how much I needed that. I, I cannot thank you enough, you know, and, and that, that gave me chills. You know, I, and that's, that's why I did it. I knew that there was somebody out there that would really impact and really needed it, you know, that more, more than I needed it. You know, I mean, yeah. Yeah. I, this money is just sitting in my PayPal. I'm going to use it to, for my registrations, for, I don't know. I might, I might buy a new reel and rod. I don't know. I mean, the, the thing is with me, I, I've learned in life because I've, I've been broke so many times and I've struggled so much that I don't really buy things I want. Mm -hmm. I buy things I need. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's so many things I want, but do I really need it? No, I don't, I don't need it. So I'm going to probably sit on that money for, to use for, you know, travel, gas, hotels and stuff. So this person really needed it, man. And I, I actually gave him an extra hundred, you know, and they were, they're blown away. And I, and I honestly reached out to him. I said, Hey, you know what, if you're, if you're ever hurting, man, I don't want you to starve. Please reach out to me. You can pay me back yeah. down the road in life when you're doing good. Cause I've been there. I've, I've had to borrow money and I've, I've had to pay people back, you know? And, and I, it's, I don't know in life, it's things you experience in life. It's kind of cool when you're, you get beyond that and you can help people out like people helped you out when you were younger, you know, and I'm blessed, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really blessed right now. All's good in my life. You know, my, my wife and I are awesome and my kids and my business. So it's all, it's all good right now. So no, I, I'm, I, I was in the position to do it, man. And I'm, and it makes you feel good. You know, it makes you feel really good when you give, you know, and yeah. I've been given a lot lately and I, I tell you what, it, it makes you feel really, really good. And like you, man, you're giving your gift every day, man. And I, I'm, I'm, you know, that's, I'm, I'm humbled to know you because you, you've impacted so many people in this world, not, not only in the kayak community, but in, in these kids, you know, you're, you're such a good role model, you know, you got so many kids fishing and loving fishing and you're such a good guy and they, they, it's contagious, you know, and I'm, and there's so much negativity in the world. There's so many a-holes out there that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to kill it with kindness, you know, and, yeah. and I hope people see, see that, and you know, more, more people do what you and I do, you know, like we're, we're cool people. We're kind. We don't have a mean bone in our body. I mean, I, I do, I, ca I can't get mean if I have to, but I, I try to restrain that. But, um, yeah, man, it's, I, I felt really good and, and, and I'm glad I did it because it, it changed somebody's destiny. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So, okay. So I got a couple stories and I, I, I want to tell you though on that, you know, we do, we face incredible challenges every day. And believe me, I, you know, I, I, we talked before about, you know, I'm a principal in a, in a pretty big school. And yeah. Just the stuff that happens, you know, you're around people, things happen. And, but at the same time, you know, you try to help people help themselves in a way too. But yesterday, yeah, you can't, you can't enable them. You can't yeah, like yeah, completely, yeah, yeah, right. you know, you, you, you can, you can give them a little like, you know, kick in the butt. 
or a little like yeah. Yeah. a little push in the right direction. Yeah, that's kind of it's it's assisted. You're assisting them a little bit, but you're, totally. You're making, yeah, you're making them earn it though as they do it. You, you have to earn it, or you'll oh you you never will. You'll you'll just want to hand down the rest of your life. Totally. So I, I do want to tell you a story. And those that are still out there, we, we've been going a while, but you know, that's okay. People love this stuff, man. I want to hear these stories. You know. Um, yeah. You know, uh, yesterday I got to witness something, and it was just I mean. Like, I felt like the devil was attacking me the entire day, you know, like, <laughs> and then I got this message that said, hey, Marty, will you come to the courthouse and wa- and witness um, our two kids that we're going to have guardianship for them, basically adopting them. And these oh, are two nice. kids in our, in our fishing club, and they lost both their parents here a couple of years ago to cancer. And they they asked me to go witness this in the courthouse. And I'm like, I, and so I'm on a meeting and I asked permission, can I just leave and go? I go in there and it was the most incredible moment I've had in a lot of years, mostly because I went through the same thing. Right. You know? And I knew it. Yeah. And I, and no, and those two parents, the judge, the judge said this, he goes, you know, guys, this is one of those times we, I don't get to have this, this moment, very, this happy moment very often as a judge. And he was talking about how happy he was for these kids. But both these parents, he asked them, he said, so why do you want to do this? And they said, because we promised their parents we would do this for them. You know, nice. and I was like in tears back there and, and just the emotion. And, and they've got they you know, they've got eight. No, there's a lot of kids in the family. Let's put it that way. And, and uh, to see that happen and to know these guys have a warm bed at night that yeah. they're in the home. And just and someday we'll talk about their success stories. It's just a, it, it's phenomenal what these kids have done. But also that's awesome, man. That that to me was one of the most incredible moments. So it's how you and like for you with that deal you had. That's what that's what the sport is about. And yeah. and and believe me, I fall short all the time because sometimes I we all do. Yeah, and and but then I have to re reboot myself and go. Hey, man, no, let's not go there. And so the thing is, is always being a lookout for somebody in need. They're out there. Yep. You know, always. And it's okay to help them. Even, and that's even, why I felt so bad about that lady at that gas station. I felt yeah. horrible, but yeah. you know, I wasn't, I wasn't meant to help her for some reason. I just wasn't, it wasn't, she, she, I wasn't the one that needed to help her. I, you know, it wasn't my destiny to help her. So, uh, yeah. and you know, honestly, these days you, you never know, you know, there's, you just can't, you can't take that chance either. I mean, I could have gotten killed or right, she yeah. could have set me up with, you know, taking, you know, you, you just never know. I mean, I mean, back in the day, I wouldn't even cross my mind, but you know, things are different these days, you know, um, unfortunately, but yeah, yeah, man, no, that, that's an awesome story. I mean, that's, that's so it's, it, it's those feel good moments that make us, you know, more well-rounded humans in life. And it just, you know, as we get older, it's just like, it's, it's kind of cool how life evolves and how we, we go through all the stages in life. You know, and you and me are kind of at that stage where we're kind of, you know, me, you know, people look up to us, you know, and people respect us. And yeah. you got to you got to you got to play that role model. You can't be uh, you know, you can't really be a dick. You know, you got to be cool and, and help people out. And, and and, you know, even with fishing, I don't I don't I'll share everything. I don't care. I mean, yeah. um, I'll help you. You know, you still have to catch the fish, but, you know, I'll, I'll get I'll stay in the right direction. But I'll, I'm going to make you do some of the work. I'm going to make you yeah. do some studying because that, that makes you a better fisherman, you know. Absolutely. Um, it, yeah. So here, here's a couple questions. Uh, one is, did your areas have much bass boat pressure, or maybe kayak pressure in that area? <laughs> oh, oh, funny. So yeah, uh, day one, a uh, 60 boat uh, bass tournament launched at my wow. ramp. And, you know, um, yeah, so I was, I, th- th- this is crazy. I haven't told this story yet. So um, we, we always launch before the boats. Always. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Boats, boats launch at safe flight. We always launch a half hour before safe flight to give us that advantage to get to yeah. the spots before the boats can, because we can only go five miles per hour and they can go 80. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're, we're granted that, that advantage for obvious reasons. So this tournament, because it was so cold, Joshua decided to up the start time, launch time to 7.30, lines in at 8. Mm-hmm. So I pull up to this boat ramp having no idea, and it is packed with boats. And I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, my spot's toast. 
I go, I talk to a few guys. I'm like, what's going on? You know, <clears throat> they're like, yeah, we're launching. And like, when's your launch? Like, we 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 can launch whenever. When are you done? We're done at three. I'm like, oh crap. You know, my my, and I I have like an hour and a half, and I'm watching these guys pound my spot. Three or four boats were just peppering my spot, and I'm just like, this sucks. I'm gonna have to go somewhere else. You know. But then I'm like thinking, I'm like wait a minute, these guys are throwing what I'm throwing. They're throwing like a rigs and big base. I'm, I'm watching them and they're, they're, they're have their, they're doing the, you know, the Ben Milliken thing where they're up there watching their pan optics and throwing a rigs. Um, and they, some are there for five minutes and they leave. I'm like, Oh, thank God. And this one boat was on my spot. It was this point, this Rocky point, And they were on there for a good probably 15, 20 minutes and they didn't catch a fish. And I'm watching them like, okay, it's going to be cool. And then after about a half hour, you know, it was, it was about seven fifteen. they were all gone. So I had the whole area to myself. I was actually went, there's this little restaurant. I went in, I was talking to the tournament director. It was actually pretty cool. It was called Fishers of Men, like an East Texas, uh, bass circuit and super cool guy, very religious, you know, and he was telling me all about everything and about their club and everything. And, mm -hmm. um, so I felt a little, I felt a little better that, um, the, I didn't see him catch any fish and they didn't stay long because my plan was to stay in that spot all day. And I had it I mean, uh, every once in a while, a boat would come, you know, but they didn't stay long. They're not, they're impatient. You know, they're, they're, hunt, they're on a hunt and search, you know, in those boat tournaments, those, those boat guys, they don't, they don't, they don't fish like we do. They don't lock into the spot, obviously because they have an advantage. They can move, like they can go, you know, 50 miles in you know no time at all it would take us two days to go 50 miles you know what i mean yeah, yeah. so like us in the kayaks we really have to that's a big part of our plan is like how much ground can we cover how much ground do we want to cover and mm -hmm. for me i want to cover as little ground as i can um if i can do it i will stay in a 20 foot space all day if i can and i do that a lot you know me yeah, I, you I'll like it. Wanna -hoo. yeah, yeah. Wanna -hoo. yeah. i don't move i stay i pretty much stay in the same spot and i'll I, i've won it you know a couple times just sitting in the same spot, peppering it, you know, but, um, yeah. So to answer the question, yes, I ran into a 60 boat, yeah. 60 boats at my ramp and I was the, uh, and it was the only kayaker there. So yeah, it was agonizing about an agonizing hour and a half, but yeah. yeah. Okay. So then one more is they want to know, Troy Inky wants to know about your kayak setup and how it helped you fishing in those conditions that you faced. Was there anything different that you did? no it's not it's no not the kayak i mean no i mean i have heaters in it um i have a no i'm kidding um <laughs> i do in mine i have a heater in mine. i i've tried i mean i had the hand warmers no i i tell you what it's just uh i, I love uh, so i know that a lot of the missouri guys fish out of the old towns i don't know i've never fished out of an old town so i don't know how hard they are to keep you know in the same spot but i'm i don't even think about it man my feet are doing their own thing my feet and my hand it's like they're, they're they're on their own. My feet and my hand are doing their own thing. You know, while I'm fishing, I'm not paying attention. I'm. Mm -hmm. I, it's kind of weird how my body works like separately when I'm in my kayak. But no, it's it's like, so Troy. I fish out of a you know a pro angler fourteen foot man, and it's it's mm -hmm. it's really easy to keep straight. You know, if you know what you're doing. Um, but I, I mean, it's hard. You know, I'll get off course every once in a while. I mean, it takes a lot of work and those winds and the rain to stay to stay in the position I need to. But mm -hmm. I'll take breaks every once in a while. I'll, I'll try to you know, finesse fish for an hour and then I'll, I'll drift back, you know, so I'll keep my, my nose at the rocks and I'll drift back and I'll throw a different bait. I'll just chuck up a crankbait <laughs> or a square bill. Mm -hmm. I'll just drag all the way to the spot and then I'll start over facing to the wind and just, you know, just little chit, 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 chit. Um, you know, I've been, I've been, I've, I've been using the pedal drive for what, like five years now. So it's just like, yeah. it's second nature. I'm pretty, I don't want to brag or be, you know, a, an ego person, but I'm, I'm pretty good at controlling the Hobie without an anchor or anything, you know, just, you just get used to it. You know, you fish so much with it, it becomes kind of second nature. So, so I'm going to go back a little bit back, back in the days when we had the old NEF GA forum. Okay. And I was way out West and I was, putting pictures on there of these bass and people were going, who is this guy that's a freak in this plastic little kayak thing? And then there was you out East and you were your name on there. Of course I put kayak Jack for my name and you put for your name, Kanai King. Where did Kanai King come from and what does it mean? <laughs> All right. Good question. So it's, so you pronounced it wrong. Oh, it is. <laughs> 
Yeah. So it's actually a Kenai king. Kenai king. So, so okay. the word Kenai, uh, it's a Kenai River in Alaska. It runs uh, through Sedultna, Kasilov, um, and runs into the Cook, Cook Inlet um, north of Homer, okay. Alaska. So I, I'm very fortunate and blessed. I fished in Alaska, I think, three times, two or three times, I don't remember. Um, and actually right behind me above my head is a Kenai King. Um, what, what the Kenai King represents to me is, is, is nastiness, fierceness, powerful, never give up. Um, it is the most badass freshwater fish I have ever tangled with in my life. The tail fin is like that wide. When I hooked into that one behind me, it, you know me, I'm a huge catch and release guy, but um, when we were there, that's all we had to eat. So I utilized, <clears throat> I utilized every single thing with, of that fish, including the skin, which I mounted. So I ate that thing. I mounted it. I did not waste any one bit of that fish. But, I mean, it was going to die anyway. It was coming up to spawn. Yeah. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> yeah. but more importantly, you know, uh, the Kenai King, you know, represents this is the mean, nasty fish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, never give up. Powerful. But more importantly to me, I mean, it represents, it was the last fishing trip I took with my dad. Oh, uh, my dad died. Yeah, my dad died like a month later after my last trip with him. It was, uh, and it was really the, the, the first time he was able to see who I really was, you know, because growing up, I was just a little rebel hippie punk that kind of <laughs> just a little, just a little dick, you know, I, I, he, he, my dad was a jock. I was a little hippie, you know, it was, it was, uh, um, there's a lot of battles with that, you know, he didn't like the route I was going and yeah. he wanted more for me. So I, I was able to prove myself, thank God, before he died, I started my business, I think two years before he died. And we did these trips to Alaska and, my dad wasn't a very, uh, into like environmental stuff, you know, and, you know, he was a jock and he, he was a great guy though. That's where I get all my giving. My dad, my dad mentored a lot of people, you know, he was a football coach and, uh, he took, he actually adopted, uh, um, one of our students who lived with us my senior year, his name was Kenton and he's actually my, you know, he's my brother from another mother, but, yeah. Uh, my dad was the most generous guy in the world, you know, and, and, and if you ask, if you could go into Omaha and say his name and everybody knows him, my dad was bigger than life. But anyways, on this trip, um, we were fishing, the, uh, we flew out to the Cook Inlet and we were fishing for silvers. Um, and I was with a bunch of like weekend warrior guys, you know, they didn't know how to fish and we're, we're uh, drifting eggs. And you couldn't really, f it, it was weird. So these, these silver salmon were 15 to 20 pounds, just massive salmon. Yeah but they bit like a bluegill. It was the weirdest thing ever. So you, it was really hard to detect a bite. And the guys I'm fishing with, they don't know how to fish. They didn't, they'd be like, Oh, I got a fish, you know, <clears throat> and it, excuse me. And they were swallowing the hooks. <clears throat> so, you know, when I, I catch them, they weren't swallowing any of the hooks. I mean, I was like mm -hmm. <laughs> zoned in super watching that, you know, anyways. So at the end of the day, you know, there's, there's bears everywhere and the bears wait for uh, you to leave. And then they eat the fish that you clean. So we caught all these, all the silvers, the guide, I was helping the guide. Well, before that I had a bear come about uh, five feet behind me and literally about crap my pants. It was a, it was a juvenile brown bear uh, and it was trying to test. Yeah, no, it was, it was pretty scary, man. It was trying to like chest itself against me because I was on the end of the line. Um, There's like six guys and I was at the far end. The guide was at the other far end. And uh, this bear was literally like five feet behind me. He, I felt him like breathe on me and I turned around and I about shit my pants and the guy had, like yelled at me, don't, you know, don't move, put your arms up, make yourself look big. And he had this 357 Magnum, you know, with a barrel on it was probably about a, a foot and a half, two foot long. He's waving at it, screaming at the bear. And I'm just like shitting my pants, excuse my language, sorry. Um, and uh, the bear kind of goes, <clears throat> And it, it got down and left. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I'm just, I just about died. I, I'm like, I'm, I can't believe I'm alive. Thank God. I just got, almost got torn to shreds. So, anyways, the bears, the, the, the smart bears, they, they're not messing with you. They know that they're going to get fed as soon as you leave. So, they're all waiting. You know, there's probably like 30 bears all around us is waiting for us to leave. So, we clean all these silvers, you know, and, and a lot of them are gut hooked. You know, I'm thinking these bears are going to come up here and eat all these fish and they're going to get hooks in them. You know, that's not cool. So everyone's leaving. You know, these guys I'm with, they're not, they don't, they don't care. They're not, you know, some of them, I hate to say it, but they're not very, you know, they'll, they'll go out, shoot a bunch of birds and they'll be like, you want my birds? And I'm like, 
No, you shot them. They're your birds. You could, well, I don't want, well, why are you hunting? You know, you, yeah. you shoot, a, you shoot, you do eat it. You don't like shoot a bunch of birds and just give them to people just because you like killing things, you know, you, you know, be responsible, keep your birds and eat them yourself. You know, no, I don't want your birds. I'll shoot what I want and I'll eat it, you know, but exactly. <clears throat> anyways, um, so a lot of these, uh, carcasses had a bunch of trouble hooks in them, you know, and, and I didn't want the bears to come eat them and get hooks, but nobody else cared. So here I am on the ground on the sandbar and everybody's like, what the hell are you doing? You know? And everyone's like, Oh, come on, Andy, it's time to go. And I'm not, I'm just like, just, you know, shut up. I'm going to, I'm going to get all these trouble hooks out of these fish. I don't want the bears to eat trouble hooks. That's kind of, you know, lame. Mm -hmm. So I do that. My dad's kind of noticing what's going on. You know, my dad, uh, we kind of talk. He's like, you know what? That I, I didn't realize that what you were doing there, and you know, you're taking the trouble hooks out of the fish so the bears wouldn't get them, weren't you? And I'm like, yeah. And he kind of like he like looked at me and he's like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool, you know. And, and it, it hit me right there that my dad finally accepted me, and <laughs> and I I was able to make. I'm sorry, I'm about ready to cry, but it's all yeah, good. Um, I get it. I get it. It's all right. No, no, it's all good, man. I miss, I miss him, man. That that, that man is he 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 made me what I am today, you know. Um, Absolutely. Um, so, anyways, uh, I finally was able to make him proud, you know. And mm -hmm. I feel bad for all the people out there that lose their parents, you know, young before they can prove themselves, you know, before their their parents can be proud of them and see what 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 kind of man they become, you know. And uh, yeah. so it, it was a great moment, you know, and. Uh, we had a great chuckle and ever since, you know, I had about two more months with him before he died. And, you know, I was late <clears throat> sitting with him in bed, you know, we're just laughing and talking about fishing and, um, yeah, so that's, that's what that fish means, man. And, uh, every time I come down here and work, I think of my dad and that trip and that, that fish is everything that I am and my dad is. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's why I, I, I'm, uh, kind of have that moniker keen eye king you know um, i'm glad you asked man because nobody nobody yeah. really knows that story yeah. um so it's the the keen eye king that that means a, a shit ton to me um so um yeah, yeah. thanks thanks for asking i appreciate it yeah, yeah you know i mean I, it goes way back i mean i used to and i love the name you know it, here's what my thought was though you're not gonna believe this <laughs> man it's gotta it's gotta be something with hawaii <laughs> oh that's funny it always intrigued me but i i've never really thought to ask you till tonight you know well, that's why you said can i <laughs> that sounds can i sounds more hawaiian than you know keen i you know it's just yeah no um no, I, I don't know. It's just, it's just that like, so, so it started when I joined NEFCA, you know, you had to come up with a screen name yeah, yeah, that's, that's and I've never been, yeah, yeah. I've never been like screen name. What's that? Well, I'm not going to be Andy Moore because yeah. <laughs> nobody on there was their name. It was all like these cool names, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to have a name. So I, I'm like, okay, what's my name? I mean, I like Bass Man or, you know, or, or, you know, whatever. And then I was just like, Kenai King. You know, but but then it, it kind of rubbed people the wrong way because people thought I was like an egotistical little yeah, narcissist I did, yeah. because of I cool. yeah. well, I, some people did because a king. You know, you're a king. I'm like trying to explain. No, it's a it's a fish. It's a, it's a king salmon. You know, and and uh, a king salmon. But the Kenai king salmon is a different breed of king salmon. Uh, the Kenai king is the most badass salmon in the world. Hands down, you can ask anybody in Alaska or anybody in the United States that knows anything about salmon fishing that the the the, the salmon in the Kenai River are a different breed, and the and the king salmon in the, in the Kenai River are they are like a badass. I mean, I've caught flathead, I've caught blue, yeah. I've caught I've caught tuna. I mean, I've caught so many different kinds of fish, but that fish right up there. Gave me the most incredible fight of my life. It took drag off of my line going up current and about a six mile an hour current pulling drag. And uh, I will never forget that fight, man. That was the, I literally, I was the only one I would. So, so here, I'll, I'll show you the lure real quick. Okay. Yeah. We might, for you those that are still out there, <laughs> still awake, uh, well, we might be the only ones awake. So, so this is a lure. <laughs> This is the lure I caught it on. It's a quick, yeah, it's a quick fish. And what, what we did is we tie a little piece of sardine on there. You'd, uh -huh. you'd wrap a little braid and you'd have a little scent because, 
you know, the, the salmon, they're, they're all the olfactory scents, they get turned on by scent, but these king salmon, they get pissed off if you get something in their face. So this thing, I mean, it, it moves, it vibrates. So literally for eight hours straight, all these other guys, they put their pole in the rod holder. You know, wait, oh, fish on. Oh, cool. Give me the pull. Yeah. I held my pull all freaking day. I'm holding my pull and it's going, I just want, I want to yeah. feel that bite, but the, just feeling that lure felt good. You know, you know what I mean? You yeah, know what? Yeah. You, you're the one that taught yeah. me that, that feeling when the, yeah. when the fish hits your crankbait, it goes through your body and it goes through your spine and it just like, it just zaps you. So I swear to God, you know, I'm just doing this and I'm just, I'm, I'm watching it for eight hours straight. And when that fish hit, it, it, I swear to God, talk about a hit. It just, wham! And I just, I went, whoa! And you're not supposed to set into them because the current will set the hook for you. And the guide's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't, I don't play that game, man. I set into fish and I set into that thing, man. It was the fight of my life. So, wow. so, <laughs> sorry I went on a little too long, but that's, that's the story of the, the Kenai well, King. Well, man, great, great time here. The, there's probably, I think there's a couple guys still awake. <laughs> we went out here <laughs> hour, hour 25 but great stories i'm sure anybody that watches this you know after this you know they'll they'll enjoy it and, and the and the stories you told because um you you just have some great the great adventure you had in texas but also how we intertwined it with all of your other adventures in the past you know and who you who you really are andy because man yeah, i man. really respect you as an angler and a person we've had some great times together and it, yeah we and, have even if you wouldn't have won that tournament, it's it, it would still been a pleasure to have you on here. No matter yeah, man. What. It doesn't matter. Win, winning's yeah. not everything in life. I don't. I've yeah. I've been there, done that. I mean, yeah, it's it's nice to win. You know, yeah. Yeah. like I said, I've had a I've had a pretty big drought the past three years. I think the last time I've won anything was 2008. I, I won like a Omaha event, like third place, you know, or something. But I think last time I won was anything big was uh, um, uh, 12 mile. Uh, in uh 2019 yeah, yeah. i think yeah, yeah i think that's the last time i actually won so it's yeah it's been a while man we, yeah we all like to win you know that's that's kind of why we do it or is it why we do it you know i mean it, it's kind of the it's the it's just sprinkling on the top you know it's not everything yeah. winning's not everything when we do this you know i do it for the adventure for the friendships for um i just love fishing man that's 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 who i am yeah same here and we've probably both done it since we were little i know i have and and, uh, one or two years old. Yep. I was catching bullhead when I was two. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I know that, uh, you know, you, you, you fish a lot. Do you have anybody that, uh, kind of supports you besides yourself on this fishing endeavor? Oh, obviously my wife. I mean, she's my best friend. I've been with her since I was, I, we're, I, you're not going to believe this. I, this, so this is a crazy story. I mean, since everybody's gone, it's just me and you, it doesn't well, matter, but still a few people on here. I, so I had my eye on my wife when I was in kindergarten. Oh, um, <laughs> we had, we did a trip down the Niobrara in these canoes and I saw this girl and I'm like five years old. And I'm like, she had this Dorothy Hamill haircut, you know, I was like, she is so, so cute, you know, so the whole way home, I'm in the, we had the old station wagon, you know, in the, the back seat, it faced yeah, out the back. I had the same yeah. thing, yeah. I can yeah. remember sitting back there, I'm five years old, with my hands on my head, just thinking about this girl I met, you know, and she didn't, she, I, she doesn't even remember me, she, you know, I asked her, she's like, who, I don't remember, you know, yeah. so you fast forward high school, she transfers to, to Brownell, you know, and wow. I see her, I'm like, that's that girl, you know, and she was dating somebody else. I was probably dating somebody else. And then, uh, you know, serendipity happened, man. And wow. I've been with her. I've been with her ever since I was 14 years old, man. Wow. So uh, we're best friends, you know. I mean, we're she's she's my better half, dude. She's so freaking awesome. So she supports me. She lets me do my thing. She lets me be Andy, you know. And that's the most important thing in a relationship. Don't change anybody. Let, let, let them be themselves, you know. And she's done that. And I let her be her. And it's awesome you know obviously my dad my mom they've supported me my whole life you know they've helped me when i'm down they've helped me when i'm broke you know they they, they, they made me struggle you know they, they'd never let me starve but i tell you what you got to struggle a little bit in life to uh um it, it does help you to struggle you know it makes you stronger Absolutely. but uh um, some of these young guys that are getting into this maybe this is a it could be a message for them because you and i have both we, we admit we both struggled when we were young, oh, we had to get through every, all the time. Yeah, and no, I mean, world, I'm in today's world, 
you know, yeah. it doesn't seem like the struggle is as, is as tough as it was when we were kids, but we don't know. I don't know that. And you don't know. Right. That no. Face, you know, I mean, I'm, I, I, yeah, no, honestly, I'm fine. I mean, I'm, I've had my head below water for 50 years. You know, I, I've struggled, you know, I'm finally the past couple of years, I'm above water yeah. for once in my life and it feels good. You know, that's why I was kind of yeah. paying it forward a little bit, but um, obviously, you know, my parents, my family, my friends, and then obviously Mike and Don at Select Sale and Sports, I can call it Mike. Hey Mike, I need help. And he's Johnny on the spot, man. That, yeah. They're 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 yeah. such a great asset for oh, us absolutely. here in Omaha. Oh yeah, yeah, they're absolutely. they're awesome. And then you know you, you know all all the OGs, all the all the guys I fish with. I appreciate the competition. You all made me better. You know, um, Workman's Francis. You know all those guys, all the Nebraska Nate, all the all the good sticks in Nebraska. I've learned so much from them. You know, everyone has different yeah. styles of fishing, and man, I've kind of picked up a little bit of everybody's style. You know, you I. I I did buy some Nico stuff, so we need yeah. to talk. I'm a, I kind of want to try that. I mean, it looks fun. I bought, I bought some of the heads and the hooks. I bought some of the, the little rubber bands. I might yeah. try it. I bought, I bought these really cool. They're called Mega Bass Bottle Shrimp, uh-huh. and I'm going to try a, a, a Nico on those. They look like they'd be really cool in the water with the Nico rig. Yeah. So I might, I might fiddle around with that a little bit. But, yeah. you know, everybody, I, I appreciate all the anglers. I learned so much from everybody, you know, and, and don't. You know, even the young guys, like the guys first get every because they have a different way of looking at things. They have a different way of fishing, mm-hmm. and I embrace it all, man. I take it all in, and I I, I apply all that. You know, you can't have enough knowledge in fishing. You know, it just makes right. you better. Yeah, I mean, I I'm in my shop back here a lot, and I I hook my phone up to my flat screen in there, watching YouTube videos, watching Bass University, things like that, all the time. Yeah, yeah. just constantly trying to pick out one or two things. The one thing I want to say though about the young guys is. It's it's okay to struggle. It's okay. Oh, You're gonna be better for it. It makes you better. You learn you learn more when you lose than when you win. Absolutely. Yeah. At, at, at the end of story. I mean, you have to struggle. You have to lose. It makes yeah. you hungry. You know, you learn so much more when you lose. Like when I win, I say I won this last one. Yeah. I didn't think of anything. Cool, I won. Yeah. When I lose a big tournament, what did I do wrong? Right. What am I doing next time? I'm, I'm, I'm studying. I'm, I'm fishing again. I'm working hard. I'm, I'm busting my ass, but like this last tournament when I won, yeah. whoo, I didn't, I didn't learn anything, you know, I won, but no, no, you struggle. If you look at all the great fishermen, like Kevin Van Dam, Rick Clun, that's the Rick Clun, you know, they don't, if you look at how many tournaments they've won, they really haven't won that many, you know, yeah, uh, you compared to how, Compared to how many tournaments they fish, they fish thousands and thousands of tournaments that maybe won like five times. You know, it's not, and, and, and it's, it's a perception like these guys, like they go out and win every time. You know, they don't, they have streaks, you know, like uh, Feeder or Feidler, whatever his name is, the, that smallmouth yeah. dude, the real skinny dude with the long hair. He's on a streak, but he's going to struggle. Look at Mike Iconelli, he's struggling. Yeah. You know, it's just, yeah, it's up and downs, man. You got you to ride the wave when you're high and you got to work harder when you're low, you know? Well, and one thing, you know, Coach Weeks here at Beatrice, legendary coach for basketball. When he would win by six or by five, by the way, they had the longest winning streak in a nation until this year, 67 games in a row. Wow. Four of the, four of the five losses – no, four of the – yeah, four, four, four of the six losses in five years, four of them were overtime. One of them is the huh. longest game in the history of the state, six overtimes at four minutes each. And then, Is this basketball? Basketball and two, oh, of wow, losses, yeah. two of the losses are by one point. But oh my he gosh, would win by six, say, or by five, he would treat that as a loss. And yeah. he would practice telling the guys, you know what, we lost that game. Yeah, you know, what? Yeah, what? we did better than we did. Yeah, so they had that mentality of, you know what, we got to win better than this, but win yeah. by, not by more. But be, be better than we were. Before. We have to be better than that. We we should win by more because we need to be better than that. No, that's a great, that's a great message. No, that's a great message, and that's that's a that's a great message for young kids. You know, don't don't settle for don't settle for mediocrity. You know, Absolutely. you can yeah you you uh the, the, you're especially kids man their potential is like way more than ours. You know we're we we've been there we've done that we're we're I, I wouldn't say we've reached our peak but we. are as you get older, you gain so much knowledge and you, you become really wise. And I mean, we, I, I still learn every day, but we're, we're, uh, we're eons beyond the younger generation as far as knowledge and stuff. But 
that's how he gained it is from, from coaches like that and mentors like that and lessons like that and learn, learning situations like that. You know, that's how we all become a, a whole person. And I'm just glad my son was able to be part of that. You know, it's just so cool to see that. That's awesome. Yeah, he turned out to be a pretty good little athlete. I've he's a good little basketball player, man. That's that's awesome. That's so fun. To, that's such a great part of life. My girls were were really good at softball, man. And I, that was probably one of the best best times of my life was those softball games and traveling and and watching them do really good and watching the hard work pay off. You know, they hit a home run and you'd be so proud because they worked their ass off and they finally get rewarded for the hard work. You know. Yeah, and and by the way, and not not that we're talking about basketball only here, but Two of the guards on this year's team were stood on the sidelines the entire practice as freshmen. You know, right. and they stuck it out. That's the other yeah. thing. If you're a young guy, stick it out. Stay with stick it out. what you're doing. Yeah. It'll come yep. it'll fruition will come through. Now, and one of those guys is like the leading scorer on the team now. Right. And that yeah, that's awesome. Never give up. Yeah. Never give up. Yeah, stay with that and uh you know, and we could tell story after story on that uh, with that. And that's when we're on the campfires, these young guys are, that's what, that's the stories we can tell to them, you know, and then they'll be able to tell those stories as well, but there's no, like, yeah, there's yeah. no shortcuts. There's no instant success. You have to. Absolutely not. The time. And that that's, that's the problem with today's world is that instant gratification. It's the internet. It's the, it's ruined us. I mean, I tell you what, the internet has ruined this world, you know, I mean, it's, it's a good thing. I mean, I, it's, I use it obviously in my business, my research, I used to go to the library. I used to go, I used to go borrow my mom's world books, you know, to to look up pictures. I had to go to the library to research. And now we have to research a project and say, I have to paint a mural of a Italian vineyard. All I do is Google Italian vineyard and all these pictures come up and I can paint it, you know? So it's absolutely watch this. So, so this is here we go. Ah, if I can get it out of the bookcase. <laughs> <laughs> Not, oh wow! Oh, dude, <laughs> we should write, we should write our own. That's before the internet, you know. You yeah. You oh, oh really? Oh, that's freaking that's freaking yeah. awesome, man. You I might have video. I might have to get me one of those. Yeah, that's that's, that's what we're missing. I mean, that, that's what we're missing these days in this world is like. You know, sit down and read. I read. I mean, I read every day. I read all the fishing. I get the Bassmaster. I read. Yeah. I read uh, in Fisherman. I read <clears throat> all that stuff. Oh yeah, I just <laughs> I just picked up that one. I just picked up a book. Um, who's the? What's the guy that the monster that hunts the monster fish? He's like the. Oh, yeah, he's like I a like British him. guy. Yeah. Yeah, I have his book. It's called. It's called Think Like a Fish. Think like a fish. That's pretty. I'm gonna get that. Think like a fish. Yeah, get it. It's. I, I've started reading it. It's. It's really cool how, because if you think about it, that's kind of what we do. You know, we have to think. What are the what? Okay, so if I'm a fish, what am I doing? You know, you, you do, and that's his. That's how he approaches these to catch these monsters. He thinks like a fish, like, and that's why that dude is so successful is because he thinks like a fish. <laughs> Here you go. Jeff Lucas just said Jeremy Wade. Jeremy Wade. Jeremy Wade. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. No. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. So anyway, let's wind this down. We we've got a record show, uh, hour thirty seven minutes, maybe hour thirty eight. But Dude, so we can, we could go out all night, Marty. Good, good <laughs> do you want to talk about my crappie? <laughs> <I'm> kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. We can do that. Yeah, we'll do that. We'll do that another time. I'm gonna win again. So when I win again, then you can have me on. We can talk about that. Then we can talk about more stories. And then uh, I'm going to do one live at your place in the future. Yeah. About your, oh. your man cave. It's going to be a man. Oh, that'd be, yeah. Yeah, do it. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Yeah. And we could do one live at, at the lake, too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, any, yeah. Any, we have internet. We have a Wi Fi. We have Wi Fi out there. So you can usually, set yeah. up shop on the deck with the lake yeah. behind you. And yeah. that'd be pretty cool. And start talking. Yeah. But yeah, it's been a while since you've been there. You need to you need to get up, you get back up here and fish. I'm going to be fishing on Friday and Saturday, maybe Sunday a little bit. Uh, but I it's good. It's going to be. Ep- I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to I'm going to just I'm putting it out. You know, I'm up there with the bat, pointing and going. The wind's going to be out of the south on Friday at 30 miles an hour. It's going to that warmest water is going to be on the north shores. Nice. It's going to be loaded with bass. So I should go to Birchard? I'm not going to Birchard. Pony Creek? No. Duck Creek? No. 
Okay, well, the, I might go to Birch. Are they is, are they open now? It's they got to be getting open uh, down there. Should be open. I'm gonna I'm gonna t- I'm going to Verdon. I'm gonna go to Verdon. Oh, Verdon. Yeah. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. maybe I'll see you there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Join me, but that's gonna be. I, I actually, I'm. I think my son might go to Pony Creek. I might go down there and try for some wiper. I don't that's know it. yet. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and who knows? I may end up down that way. I don't know. But uh, I, 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 would, I just want to kind of get my stuff ready because I'm going to go yeah. to Kenny Como into the month. Uh, okay. For the first uh, Moyak Series One. Oh, cool. So um, you haven't you haven't fished a tournament yet this year? Oh yeah. No. Right. I'm going to okay. online. I'm going to KBF online. Okay. Got to qualify for the KBF this fall. Oh, and, cool. Because I can't hit any I can't hit any live ones because of my job right now. I can only get away so much. And right. Uh, you know, I, I could probably. Well, hey. I don't want to hear the crying. You're a teacher. You got all summer off, buddy. So yeah, don't don't be playing that card, cry yeah. baby. Um, my dad, my dad only said you better be a teacher because you get you got fish all summer. Yeah. And I should I should have taken his advice, huh? Not as a principal, you don't. Oh God, no! I can't babysit. I would have been a good art teacher. Kids would have loved me. <laughs> you make a great art teacher. I would, man. I, I honestly, I I still I might. Oh, I'm gonna write a book. I'm going to write a book about all my, you know, the, the secrets to decorative painting. And I'd love to teach, you know, I might do, do a class at Metro or high school or, or oh. college. I, I would love to, you know, cause I, 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 I mean, I got a lot, I got a lot to offer. So yeah, that'd be, that'd be fun. Well, with the shortage that there is right now, if you can breathe, if you can breathe, <laughs> you're you a teacher. Off, yeah. you probably have a job. Yeah. Right. I don't, I don't know if I could deal with the kids these days though. They're not, they're not like they were 20 years ago. <laughs> You'd relate to them well. You'd be yeah, I would. They'd, they'd respect me because all I'd have to do is just smack them in the face. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, Andy, thank you. Cool, so man. Much. Oh, dude, that, that was, that was a blast, man. It's great. Great talking to you. I love running into you. I love fishing with you and uh, hope to see you soon, brother. Okay. All right. You too. And, and congrats again, man. And for all you do there, tell your wife hi. And, and I'll, I will. I'll, I'll probably look you up tomorrow though, really. Cause I might. I'm do. Gonna- yeah. I, I'm working. I'm just, I'm working in my studio tomorrow. I'm painting a bunch of chairs. So I'm down. I'll be down here with my Kenai King painting a bunch of chairs. So give me a shout. All right. I will uh, message you. So cool, man. All right. Take care. All right, Late. Bye. Bye.